So in this video, we're going to talk about what is TCP, what handshakes it has, why we want to use UDP instead of TCP for our smart home design. At the end, how we can send TCP socket. It's as simple as this line of codes. So without any further ado, let's begin. So in the last video, we talked about UDP socket and how to send and receive UDP socket. And we did talk about how you can set up your Microsoft Visual Studio to write program for Arduino or ESP8266. In this project, in this video, we're going to talk about how you can send TCP socket. TCP socket is uh, is a lot like uh, UDP socket, but it has a lot of handshakes, so it is more reliable, you know. But uh, it takes more RAM, and in ESP and in any micro, uh, we don't have a lot of RAM, so you have a lot of limitation. Like uh, I think in LPC. Uh, in one of the LPCs, uh, you can just connect 20 clients to that server because in uh, micro and in ESP there is not a lot of RAM so it's better to stick with UDP and make that handshakes uh, for yourself so when we, when we say handshakes, uh, what is that? this is the process for uh, our ESP to establish a connection to the server. First, it sends a sync data to our server. And when server receives that sync data, it's, uh, it uh, responds as a, an acknowledgement and a sync data as well. Client with that acknowledge knows that server did receive that sync data that client sent to it. After that, client sent back an acknowledgement to tell the server that I did receive your sync data. So after that, the connection is established, but it's not all. So you see, this part is for connection establishment phase, but for sending data, you know, you see in here, it says HTTP GET, you know, all HTTP request is just a TCP that has an, uh, a standard string in it. So you know that HTTP GET is a TCP packet that we are sending. First, we send data and we get the data that we needed and after that TCP will send an acknowledgement that I received the packet for closing the connection server sent an acknowledgement and a finished data to our client and a client uh, said that uh, I did receive that with that acknowledge and sent a finished data as well and server after that sent back an acknowledgement to say that everything is finished and the TCP uh, circuit is closed but what is the problem? The problem is uh, the internet sometimes has timeout. It has uh, a lot of issues that maybe your router uh, goes off. So there is a lot of uh, reasons that your connection may be lost. If there is a import important data to send and the connection was lost, you won't be able to send it and you will crash. Nothing will be sent. It. So you should always check for the connection establishment. So it takes a lot of RAM. All of this should be under RAM and you use a lot of RAM. So that's why you can't connect more than 20 clients to, the, to your uh, ESP server. I don't know what the, the exact number, but it's like 20, 30 clients to your server. So your RAM, not just your RAM, you get a lot of data transmitting error. Your data won't receive in the server. So that's why I decided to use UDP circuit because I, I can have my handshakes, I can have my encryption and it's all UDP is all like a serial and it's easy to use that. But in TCP there is a lot of sync data, finish data, acknowledgement and all of this handshake can go wrong with one timeout of your internet. So that's why I use UDP in my project but let's use TCP to see how we can establish our connection and send data so for sending TCP socket let's just create a project if you don't have these two options just uh, select C++ here Arduino here and ESP receive for this one and these two options will be available for you and just select empty Arduino project hit next choose a location and choose a name this TCP example and hit create. Let's get rid of these comments. First thing to do is to build our project so we don't get any error. After that, you should include our ESP8266 Wi Fi. So choose include 
ESP8266 here uh, you know uh, you see there is not a autocomplete option here but when you write it here and save it and build your project all the autocomplete function will be there now if you try to include it again ESP8266 Wi-Fi will be there you see so first you should compile always build or compile now that we have this we should get connected to our Wi-Fi because in the last video I did talk about how you can connect to the Wi-Fi uh, we don't do it in this project and we, we will just copy paste uh, our Wi-Fi connecting from last video so first we should have our SSID and the password next we should connect to our Wi-Fi router with this Wi-Fi that begins SSID password you know that from the last video next we should check if, if we are connected to our Wi-Fi or not if we connect it we can get the IP uh, in this uh, this time because we don't have we don't want to receive any TCP socket we just want to send the TCP we don't need to get that IP but in other video I will talk about how you can create a server in ESP8266 have the web server for yourself so you can show the uh, an HTML page or picture or what you whatever uh, you see like this that uh, our uh, Wi-Fi router has this page we can have that in our ESP as well in the next video I will show you how you can do that uh, let's begin our serial for for debugging again and after that we can create our TCP so now that we are connected to our Wi-Fi we can just create our over over TCP client so we say Wi-Fi client and let's name it client this Wi-Fi client is our TCP and if we say client that connects to you see it get a, a string for our host and a string for our port when uh, where we can get that I will show you how we can find it it's just any two a string that you should put in there if you open your packet center of course you can use any of uh, any web server or site that you have I will show you how you can uh, send or receive TCP socket from uh, a node.js or PHP web server in here we want to create a TCP server so we can connect to it from our ESP so in here uh, you can see we put it on TSP and in here the T TSP server that it create is in port of 62748 okay so that's the port that we should use to send data to our packet sender uh, TCP server the host the IP of the packet sender TCP server is shown here this here 192.168.1.101 okay so that's the IP that we should put in here that's our host in our local network and the port that we want to use is in uint 16 so it's just a number and you can find it here let's put it 62, 74, and 8. That's it. With this line, we can get connect to our packet sender TCP server. Let's see what this connect function uh, have for return. Just hold Control and click on the connect, and you see it give us an int. If it give us a zero, so it means that it's not connected to anything but it, if, it, if it give us uh, a number more than zero it means that we are connected to uh, the over TCP server so like Wi-Fi we can just say while let's put this parenthesis here while, while client is not connected to our host and port so it will stay here let's just copy and paste these two lines and after this we can say serial dot print ln connect so if we pass this 
So uh, it means that we are connected to our TCP server. No, we can send data to, to our TCP server. It's easy. We can just say client dot print ln. Let's just say hello world. And after that, we should just close this connection with a stop. And let's just give it a delay so it will send this hello world every two seconds that's it for sending TCP circuit now let's just upload upload to our ESP how we can do it I, I did explain it before you just hold flash and hit reset so it goes to flash mode and now we can just select our port and build and upload to our ESP. Let's just open our serial monitor and you see it sent hello world and you see that it's sending hello world to our packet sender TCP server. You know that I, I'm doing all of this uh, to start my project for a smart home design or IoT. I decide to use to use UDP because it's faster, it don't need a lot of RAM, it's easier, it's like a, a simple serial and it don't get disconnected or lost connection or uh, overhead or any overhead it's it's better than tcp in my case because i can have my my handshakes and my encryption as well thank you for watching this video if you like please uh, hit that like button if you like this video and uh, subscribe for more because I, i'm gonna talk about how you can use all of this knowledge to start your own smart home project thank you for watching bye